As many of our readers have become accustomed, it's become harder and harder to be a specialty engine shop these days with singular focus. The folks at UCF Machine Shop in Carlisle, Pennsylvania can certainly attest to that. UCF will tackle pretty much anything that comes in the door, and that's how the shop got an opportunity to work on a 1914 Stutz Bearcat engine. This antique is our latest engine of the week. Engine Builders Engine of the Week is sponsored by Pengrave. Precision, performance, Pengrave. Always the original green oil. L-Ring DOS Original. Leading technology, leading service. And SCAT Crankshafts. Everything for your LS engine. Hey everyone, I'm Crystal Smith with Engine Builder and today we're going back in time more than 100 years to tell you about a 1914 Stutz Bearcat engine build done by UCF Machine Shop. The customer called one day asking if UCF was interested in the job and it wasn't long before the engine showed up at the shop. Here's UCF's Mike McCommons to tell you more. It was already torn apart. I think he had found it in a sawmill or something. They used to take them out of the cars and put them to run sawmills back in the day. It was basically in pieces and baskets and boxes. Every connecting rod was bent. Distance were wore out. Valves, just everything was worn out on it. According to Mike, the engine had spun a rod at some point in its life and someone used a big hunk of leather to put in the rod to keep it going for as long as it could. The babbit was all beat out. Because the rods aren't an available piece, and like I said, they were bent. We had a set of rods made, billet rods made, and pistons made. But we did have the Babbitt pot up in New York. He poured the rods for us, and he actually had main bearing shells in stock for it that we got from him, and then line board to get the crank to fit. The rods may have been in the worst shape, but everything on this engine needed some serious attention. UCF started by getting everything cleaned and magged before they noticed that one of the jugs was cracked. One jug was cracked. We ended up at used to lock and stitch pins along with welding. Or so it was that thin that it, it just couldn't be pinned. UCF also pressure tested both jugs and bored the cylinders out. The shop had Victory One make a set of valves for the engine with 3 8 inch stems, springs, retainers, and locks. UCF put the guides in and a shop called Camcraft reground the cam. A local shop called USA Spares made UCF a flywheel ring gear and lifter housings. In-house, UCF also line board the engine, balanced it, did a valve job, and resurfaced the bottom and tops of the jugs for the water manifold plates that bolt on top. We resurfaced all that and repaired any bolt holes that were eroded away and gone. Converted rings for us to gapless. We rebuilt the oil pump also. Crank we green ground that. The shop even went as far as making all the gaskets themselves to fit in the antique engine. Gasket City supplied us with the sheet material. Right. Then we just traced them and cut them out and punched holes in them from there. There was a couple of things like oil lines and because they have like and they just have one oil galley but they have external oil lines and stuff the pump bolts on the side of the pan externally. What came into UCF machine as bits and pieces and boxes and baskets left the shop as a new looking 106 year old engine ready to relive its glory days. This Stutz engine is a 390 cubic inch inline four cylinder that is capable of putting out around 60 horsepower. Not bad for an antique. And that does it for this episode of Engine of the Week. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell. If you have an engine you'd like to feature, please email our editor, Greg Jones, at gjones at babcox.com. Thanks for watching.